morning, Birmingham. Good morning, members of the council. Today is Tuesday, February 22nd. It's 9.34 a.m. I call to order the regular meeting of the Birmingham City Council. If you will please stand, we'll have the invocation by Councilor Woods and the Pledge of Allegiance by Councilor Clark. Good to see everyone. Bow your heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to serve, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to wake up and uh, come here, debate, and discuss the important issues that face the city, Lord. We ask that you give us all wisdom, guidance to uh, serve as in our fullest potential, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Mr. Clerk, if you'll call the roll. Council Member Abbott. Present. Council Member Clark. Present. Council Member Moore. Present. Council Member O'Quinn. Present. Council Member Tate. Present here. Council Member Williams. Good morning. Good morning. Council Member Woods. Present. President Pro Tem Smitherman. Good morning. Good morning, Council President Alexander. Good morning, Mr. Clerk. Thank you very much. Councilors, we have before us approval of the minutes from the previous meetings, September 14th through September 28th, 2021. Could I have a motion and a second for approval of those minutes? Move. Second. Councilmember Williams and Pro Tem Smith? Yes. All right. Motion. Vote should be starting now. Uh, abstaining all right. all right thank you very much those minutes are approved the minutes are not ready for october 5th 2021 through february 15th 2022 good morning mr mayor morning madam president and good morning to the entire city council it's good good to see you all this morning madam president and council I have a few notes um the first one is about the world games um, it's, it's been a minute since i've heard uh, Councilwoman Abbott's um, weekly updates, but she usually includes the World Games is coming. As you all know, the World Games will be here in our city July 7th through the 17th. Um, and as a note, um, the World Games organizers will be hosting a virtual summit next Wednesday, March 2nd. So they're ho hosting a virtual summit next Wednesday, March 2nd from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So over this um, 60 minutes, um, it's for potential vendors. The following vendors they're wanting to participate are for those of crafts, arts, ceramics, jewelry, and photos. Um, this is not a meeting for food vendors, and I hate to stress that point, but I want to repeat those potential vendors for crafts, arts, ceramics, and jewelry, and photos. Uh, you can register for this vendor summit at twg2022.com slash woo w o o again that's t w g 2022.com slash w o o so counselors if you have any of these vendors in your district or business owners please encourage them um, to sign up for the summit next week so they can know how to be engaged and participate in the world games another note um, as you all know um, the birmingham promise is well underway of accepting that applications but it goes in hand in hand with completing the, the actual FAFSA. So if you have a graduating senior again in your district um, or know a family member or church member or friend anything of that nature please share that the priority deadline for the free application for student aid form um, again which is commonly referred to as FAFSA is March 1st so if my numbers are correct when is that everybody next Tuesday? Um, one week. That meeting deadline ensures students receive the maximum assistance um, for their Pell Grant, and they can go to studentaid.gov. Again, that's stud studentaid.gov. Uh, but we want to encourage our young people, especially our seniors in high school now, to complete their FAFSA. Um, another note, um, of course you all know, we, second administration, we decided to do a transition team. There's a, the public is invited to a virtual town hall style meeting, which is hosted uh, by the Education and Talent Subcommittee, uh, Mayoral Transition Team. That meeting will be today from 5 to 6.30. Uh, for more information for anybody who wants to attend, they can email Tracy Bennett. Uh, 
her email address is traci dot bennett at birmingham al dot gov one last note uh, madam president and council it's a note of importance i know it's on my mind i imagine it's on yours as well uh, and that's dealing with violence in our city um, now i'm going to speak to uh, some of our youth unfortunately have been killed a little later publicly but i and i want to take this setting to talk about domestic violence um, i'm not sure if you all are aware of some of the issues that are happening in our community also with domestic violence and so two women have been killed by significant others in less than a week in our city there was one last week and then there was one over the weekend i think it's all of our mission to make this community safe but I think a part of that is not just from random criminals on the streets, but from those who claim they care about us, uh, but instead use um, verbal abuse or physical abuse or actual pick up a gun. And I think we've seen the actual picking up of a gun in the last week. <clears throat> we all know that the pandemic has exasperated already unstable domestic conditions and situations in homes. And so I think I want to give you all a stat that I think is alarming, but I think the community needs to know this. Calls to the YWCA Central Alabama 24-hour crisis line have steadily risen. 2018, those calls um, were 1,687 calls. But in 2021, it was 2,666 calls. So I feel like I need to repeat that number to you. The rise of domestic issues and those reaching out uh, for his help 2018 it was 1687 last year alone it was 2666 and just last month the first 31 days of the year of 2022 213 crisis calls were reported my point is actually very direct and simple if you all know someone and this is to the public as well for anyone who feels you are in a situation please take advantage of using this hotline call this number we believe it can save a life we can believe it can prevent someone from being harmed more verbally abuse or physical abuse or in the worst case um, leading to actual um, being shot in or killed the number you can call for help from domestic violence is 205-322-HURT that's h-u-r-t or a different way of giving you that number it's 205-322-4878. Again, that's 205-322-4878. Counselors, please share that number um, on your communication channels, um, on, your, on, your, on your website, on your social channels individually, et cetera. Uh, we want to get the word out there that there is help. If you're in a domestic situation, um, hope that you don't feel trapped. There is a number you can call. There is resources that exist. And I'll be speaking with leadership at the Y a little later. We'll go public as well about continuing to share this information. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate all of the information that you shared with us. I know as counselors, a lot of this information we would want to share with our residents. So we'll use our social media and different uh, means of communication and get this to our neighborhood leaders as well. Thank you very much. At this time, Mr. Clerk, if you will um, entertain for us the consent agenda. Yeah. <clears throat> the consent agenda starts on page two with items two and three. Page three, we have items four and five on consent. Page four, did we leave nine on consent? Yes, sir. Okay. Page five, we have items 10, and I assume we also left 11 on consent? Yes. 11 on consent. Page 6, we have items 12, 13, 14, and 15 on consent. Page 7, items 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 are on consent. Page 8, we have items 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25 on consent. Page 9, we have items 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 on consent. Page 10, we have items 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35 on consent. Page 11, we have items 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40 on consent. 
page 12 of items 41, 42, 43, and 44 on consent. Page 13, items 45, 46, 47, and 48 are on consent. Page 14, we have items 49, 50, 51, and 52 on consent. And we conclude the consent agenda on page 15 with item number 56. Thank you very much. Counselors, if you have, do you have any items that you'd like to add or remove from the consent agenda? I don't see any, okay, Dr. O'Quinn? Yes, um, item 40, if we could remove that one from consent, please. All right, that's item 40 on page 11, request to move from consent. Any other items? I don't have any speakers that have wished to speak to those items. Let me read the, our statement for consideration of consent agenda. All items designated as consent are routine and non-controversial and will be approved by one motion. No separate discussion of these items will be permitted unless a council member, the mayor, or a citizen interested in a public hearing so request. If so, such items will revert to its normal place on the agenda order of business. All matters of permanent operation, and those are indicated with a P, will be read. All other matters will be announced by reading the item number only. All public hearings will be announced. Councilors, go ahead and entertain a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. This time we'll call for the vote. Thank you, counselors. The consent agenda is approved. If you were here to speak to any of the items that are listed on the consent agenda, those items have been approved, and so we'll be moving to the other items listed on the agenda. Thank you. First item number one, Mr. Clerk. One second, please. Yeah. Going to item one, and note on this item before we start that there was no recommendation by the Public Safety Committee they did not have a recommendation on the item. Item one, a resolution relative to the application of Pooch Park, Birmingham, LLC, for an on and off premise beer and wine license to use a good dog. 2308 First Avenue South, Birmingham, and hearing of ownership parties. Motion, please. Excuse me, at this time the item is before us, and this is a public hearing. Ms. Tate. Good morning. Um, I want to call up the representative for the park and, and anybody that's here to speak um, against the item. So it's the representatives, are, are you here? The representative for the park. And state your name and um, address for the record, please. I'm Clint Carmichael, and my address is 3491 Tangle Creek Estates Drive in Vestavia, Alabama. Could you just tell the, the, the council um, about the Pooch Park, the plan yeah. for the Pooch Park, and why you're applying for um, off-premises beer and wine license, please? Sure. Uh, so Pooch Park was the original name. Good Dog is, is the name where we went with. <laughs> um, Pooch, or Good Dog's an off-leash dog park, so it's a turfed area surrounded by eight-foot fences where you can take your dog off a leash and have a drink if you'd like. We'll also offer daycare, dog daycare out of this facility. Um, it's a safer, Good Dog's a safer version of a dog park in that we require proof of vaccinations prior to entry. We have a bark ranger, which is like a lifeguard trained in dog behavior to keep the cart safe. And we don't allow children in the off-leash area of the park will never be open past 10 p.m. And Good Dog is going to be run by operators of the Palms Pet Resort, which has been a, which is a daycare and boarding facility out of Birmingham that's been running for 20 years. So we'll do a good job running the park. We're also focused on the community and that 1% of our sales go to Hand and Paw and Underdog Rescue, two great Birmingham-based organizations. I sent some pictures of the existing dog parks, some of the existing dog parks in the Southeast 
The first one um, is Fetch Park in Atlanta. It opened last year in the middle of Buckhead. As you can see in the pictures that I sent, it's surrounded by high-end condos and apartments. And excuse me, sir, did you send those pictures oh, directly to the, excuse me, Ms. Clark, did you send those pictures directly to the council or uh, I sent them to, to Brand administration? Brandon McRae uh, last week and asked him to send them along. Okay. Thank you. We'll figure out where those went to. Those <laughs> went to our um, Ms. Okay. Kate's sorry. office. Yeah, sorry. Who get those that. for us? That's okay. Continue, Ms. Clark. Was no, that? No, that was okay. it. Thank sorry. you. Sorry. And Go it, ahead. Yeah. And so, you will be able to see in those pictures. Fetch Park is in the middle of Buckhead, Atlanta, surrounded by high-end condos. I've outlined all that in the Google Earth image uh, in, in these pictures. Playwash Pint is a, another dog park and bar out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's in the middle of condos and apartments in downtown Chattanooga. Uh, and it's literally attached to an a really high-end apartment building called Passenger Flats, and you can see that as well. Um, many residential developers now include dog parks when they build multifamily, and so a lot of these, these communities have embraced the dog park as an amenity because that's what it is. Compared to Atlanta and Chattanooga, Good Dog is in an industrial zoned area. Uh, this building used to be a steel rolling plant and the majority of our, neighbor, our neighbors are also zoned industrial. Um, many of our residential neighbors are really excited about the park and to have a park and daycare so close by that they can walk to from the Rotary Trail. We've spoken with a few residential neighbors, some of which are here today and they're against the park. Um, these are good people. We've met with them in person a few weeks ago. And after that meeting, we made significant changes to our layout to further enhance the sound absorption in the building. Um, and we're applying for a beer wine license because we'd like to serve beer wine um, to patrons of the park if, if they choose that. Um, again, no liquor. Um, and so we're excited to bring Good Dog to Birmingham. And, happy to ans answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Does do any councilors have any questions um, they would like to ask, please? I have a question. Dr. O'Quinn. Um, so the, the resolution says on and off premise. Um, so I, I mentioned that to Greg Stanley. We're, we're, there's, we're not, we don't want an off premise uh, uh, license and I pointed that out to him a couple weeks ago and he said it's the same category um, but we are not requesting an off-premise license okay so you have no intent to sell to so folks can carry alcohol off the uh, premise. just on premise thank you yep. um, thank you just curious and this why, why not liquor why just beer and wine? Because this is a park. This is a park first, bar second. Um, if you go to, uh, frankly, Playwash Pint, the Chattanooga-based facility uh, that we went to this a couple years ago, and just it's such a good experience. It's they only do beer and wine, and this is not a place to go and get drunk. This is a place to have a drink or two with your dog, um, and so we just liquor and shots or anything like that are, are not what this is about. This really is a park type environment. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have if you have been to one of these parks, fetch or play wash pint, you'll 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 kind of see that. Um, okay. It's, it's, I was just curious. Yeah. House and I was going to visit, you know, that kind of. Yeah. Any other counselors have any questions? I don't really have a question, but I expressed my concern about the noise ordinance and the fact that this is adjacent to other businesses and it's open. You know, it's, it's not all within an enclosed building. And so, you know, the noise ordinance doesn't allow your noise to be heard 50 feet away, you know, beyond 50 feet. So my concern is that there will be a noise problem and then enforcement of the noise ordinance, it could just cause a lot of conflict. That's my only concern. I mean, I don't take my dog out for a drink, 
But you know, if I did, I might want to go to your place, but I don't, I wouldn't want to be the one who had the barking dog that irritated all the neighbors and caused the police to come. So that's, that's just my concern about this, this location is that it's, there's a lot of other businesses and people very close by and the Hardwick is right across the street or it will be right across the street when they finish it. So that's just a concern for me. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Tate. Um, just wanted to understand your hours of operation in light of um, the noise comments. I know my neighbor's dark <laughs> barking dogs keep me up all night, but um, my dog doesn't join in, so that's helpful. Yeah, so we there is on the keep up all night, there is no boarding here, uh, no overnight stays. The daycare hours will be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And the bar will open during the weekday, and we will not do daycare during the weekend. Um, during the weekday, the bar park will open at four and close at either nine or 10. It will never be open. This park on weekday or weekend will never be open past 10 p.m. Uh, we've agreed to that on our lease. And, and so we'll never be open late. Um, so on the weekend though, our, we, again, we won't do daycare and the hours will be about 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. until 10 p.m. And, and just to Councillor Abbott's point, um, a lot of our commercial and residential neighbors are excited about us. Um, I, I know the Hardwick has been uh, marketing kind of the daycare and dog to potential office tenants and that kind of thing. And so, you know, daycare is, there's not a lot of daycare downtown Birmingham. There's only one competitor within a mile of us. Um, a lot of people do have dogs and, and so, uh, this, this is an amenity to an area in downtown that, that needs it. Any other counselors? I, I just wanna make, make a, a small comment here. Um, when we, you know, cities in, in many states are just moving in, in progressive ways that people are not gonna be happy you know, as Councilor Clark said, she has a dog, and when the dogs in her neighborhood join in, everybody, you know, the dogs just go ballistic. And so, you know, I think we really re need to really reimagine um, when we decide to, you know, start building and and um, progressing the city in such a way. Um, are we gonna, you know, stop? everybody from, from wanting to, to do some things just because people, you know, got an issue with a, with a dog bark. And I think he's laid out, you know, that the park is not gonna be open. He's presented, you know, some, some great pictures where things are progressing in, uh, in other areas where, where the other parks are. So we, we really have to um, just imagine you know, this, and this is what happens. I mean, you hear sirens downtown when police is a car, just all kinds of stuff. So I think we just have to, you know, get at a point where we make some, you know, some decisions um, when it comes to moving in a progressive way. Thank you, Ms. Tate. Mr. Moore. Yeah, I did have one question. Um, I'm pretty sure you possibly may mention this and I just missed it. Um, is there a capacity uh, on how many dogs are uh, allowed at a time? Yeah, we, we're we doing this in Auburn as well. We haven't opened yet. We are, we're gonna open in Auburn April 1st. Um, our plan is to cap capacity in the total park of dogs at about 50. Play Wash Pint in Chattanooga caps it at about that number. It's not a, they explained it's not a perfect science. It's a little bit, you have to know the kind of dogs that are in there and kind of feel the energy a little bit. And that's the, that's the job of the bark rangers, which we'll have too. Um, and they will, be, but there will be a cap. Um, it's just, it's around 50, but it's not, uh, it kind of can ebb and flow a little bit based on the energy in the park. 
Okay. And and there's no discrimination against like what type of dogs are. A any dog is allowed. You just have to provide your proof of vaccinations. We have three rabies, Bordadella and DH LLP. Um, uh, so, but there, any dog can come in as long as you've got proof of vaccination. Okay. And there is a strict, you know, once you're in the bark rangers and if, if the dogs are, are barking a lot, I mean, just to the obvious point of barking, if a dog comes in and is barking a lot, that's not good for anyone in the park. This isn't just for the neighbors. That loud dog, after we have a strict policy, it's all on our website of kind of the policy that we en enact once the dog is, is in there. But if your dog's being obnoxious after a while, we're going to ask you to leave. And that's under our full disclosure. We can ask anyone to leave at any time and because it's all about safety in the park. And it's not, you know, it's safety, but also just being a nuisance. And so we have the full right to ask anyone to leave. Um, and on the, on the daycare front, we'll be limiting the amount of dogs there as well and um, will help with the noise. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's uh, get the next uh, per people. Are people here to speak against um, this issue? If you could come up and state your name for the record, please. And you add. Chairman Tate, Madam President, my name is Lewis Willie. I'm an attorney and I have been asked to represent some of the residents who are directly adjacent to this project. These are folks who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and in some cases a million or more to buy into this neighborhood in downtown Birmingham for the very specific reason that they are excited about the vitality and the experience of being in a downtown urban area. They understand that there are issues that will come up with police sirens with noise of various kinds. What they are most concerned about in this particular development is the fact that even when the developer went to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, they described it as we have submitted it by code as an outdoor facility. There are no walls on the entire south end of the building. Not only is there no wall, but there is no roof on that part of the building. It is completely open and is within just a very few feet. If we're talking about a 50 foot spread for the noise ordinance, it is well within that 50 foot spread. These are people who not only live right next door with a portion of the building, the, the condo development building, being only nine feet away from the corrugated tin wall of this structure, partial structure. But these are people who are not only living there, some of them work there. So the idea that there will be, it was conveniently left open as to how many dogs would be allowed in the daycare. When he gave you the number of 50, that was in the park, okay? So the park is 4 p.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. But during the day, several of these people who are right there next to this facility work from home. If you have ever been near the Palms Pet Resort, quite honestly, I have to admit, I've taken my dog there a number of times. I love the place. They do a great job. But when you pull up beside them, you can hear the dogs barking significantly in the daycare. So it's not, and it, there's no way to control a group of 30 or 40 or 50 dogs in kennels and their barking. That is going to be a major problem. In addition, one of the things they've talked about is the idea of having music and or bands of some kind. So again, you basically have an open outdoor facility that will be operating uh, music. There's no way they can fill the interior of that space with music without it spilling over well beyond 50 feet. 
The idea of the park, I think, is, is actually a great one. And I'm not sure, I was not given the opportunity to look at the pictures that you all got of the other parks that are in these urban areas. But I would hazard a guess that those are buildings, not open air structures. The wall, the corrugated tin metal walls of the building don't even reach the ceiling. So all around the sides, noise will be coming out. It is really important when you all consider applications such as this that the um, uh, the impact to the immediate neighbors is taken into consideration. How many complaints of noise complaints are we going to be able to put up with before we end up having to come back and rescind the business license once someone has has been up and running. A lot of the problems that have been downtown with noise have not been from the interiors of the buildings that were in question. It has been because of the people who were coming out on the sidewalk at two or three o'clock in the morning and being loud. Now obviously this is not gonna be the situation there at two or three o'clock if they're gonna close at nine or 10, but what you have is not an enclosed building. You have an open air shed, basically, where there is no way that they can control the amount of noise that extends well beyond the 50 feet of uh, the requirement and the noise ordinance. And I would just ask you to take into consideration not only that concept and the number of complaints that you are sure to get but the impact on these people's value in their homes that they have invested heavily in. These folks who live in Birmingham as opposed to living in Vestavia are there because they wanted to be part of the vibrant Birmingham community. And they are willing to accept nuisances but not something that is going to be an everyday, ongoing problem. We're already talking about, I think, the Hardwick development across the street was, I can't remember if it was on the consent agenda or not, but that is going to be another area where there are going to be bars and restaurants. But those are going to be in a building. So it is controllable as to what amount of noise seeps out. You cannot control the amount of noise when you don't have a wall on an entire side of your building, nor do you have a wall that goes up to the roof, nor do you have anything more than just basically sheet metal between you and the outside, because it is an outdoor facility. And I implore you to please take into consideration the impact of the noise, the impact on these people's uh, reasonable right to enjoyment of the, uh, the homes that they have bought, and the impact, the potential impact on the, the value of these homes, which they have just bought, hoping, of course, that they would escalate in value. But if this becomes the problem that we really believe, and I think it's reasonable to believe that it will be, that is going to greatly detrimentally impact the value of their homes. Thank you, Attorney uh, Willie, um, for um, your, your comments. And I'm gonna allow some other people that are here that are against the park to come up and speak and, and just make you be sure to stay within your three minute time frame. Thank you. Hold on one second, we do have one question from a counselor. I, I just have one quick question. Uh, can you tell me uh, how many residents are, are in that area? Do you know about are, a roundabout number? There are four buildings, mm -hmm. separate buildings as part of the, the complex. And each one of those has seven units. So what do you 
Twenty. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, and one of those buildings, as I said, is literally nine feet away from the side of this structure. Thank you. Are these your handouts? Yes, sir. Can, can you walk us through what you're presenting here? Uh, well, there are several uh, different things, some of which uh, show the open air nature of it. Uh, one is the uh, uh, plan that uh, had been presented to the VBA, which showed the bar area going down the entire If you'll do, you don't. Can you just walk us through? The south side of the building, which is completely open. Okay. There was one uh, layout that was presented to the CDA when they were seeking a variance, which had the bar area going down the complete west side closest to the residences. When they made their application to the uh, Public Safety Committee for the liquor license, they had a different uh, layout which had part of the kennel area directly beside the residential area. Um, so that's a concern. There are um, a myriad of issues with this because in reality when they applied and went to the ZBA for the variance, none of the residents uh, uh, directly adjacent were even notified. By the time they found out the 15-day period of appeal to the ZBA uh, had long expired. Uh, they found out about it when it was advertised in Birmingham now, I think it was on social media. So there is recourse uh, in the courts uh, relative to uh, seeking to overturn the variances. We would prefer not to go there. Uh, but we need to have, at the very least, the understanding of this developer that he needs to help in allaying some of the fears and concerns of the residents. Uh, and the idea that his liquor license is not guaranteed at this point in time something that would greatly enhance the resident's ability to be able to get him to the table to have genuine discussions to see if there is a way to alleviate their concerns or some of their concerns at least and and sit down and try to get this thing going because in theory it's a great idea unless you happen to live next door and this is not a NIMBY kind of thing. You know, this is not just a not in my backyard. This is directly going to affect them. And it's not like someone that just doesn't like the kind of development. Because many of these folks do have dogs and probably would end up going. Thank you, Mr. Willie. I believe we, uh, Attorney King was going to address some of the items. Right. So, Council, what Attorney Willie has. Um, stated is a zoning board of adjustment action which is a separate entity that you all are not to consider today if there's any questions I would recommend you all asking zoning but we are here today specifically for an on and off premise alcohol license okay thank you attorney Willie um, is anybody here to speak for the park besides the owners okay let me extend that, that offer to you as well and Three minutes, please. And just state your name and address for the record, please. Hey, my name is Bill Becker, 2045 Keithville Drive, uh, Hoover, 35244. Uh, I'm the president and director of Underdog Rescue. Um, I'm lucky enough to be one that a good dog has generously decided to give us a percentage. Um, so I just wanted to show my support because I think what they're doing will also have a big positive influence on the community, um, specifically the rescue community. I'm very, our rescue is very small. 
So the fact that they want to give us a percentage is huge. Um, so for the rescue community, what they're doing is very much supported. Um, I think it's a great idea. And it's a game changer for a lot of rescue. Um, and I'm not the only one. They're doing hands and paws as well. So um, that's it. I think it's great. And Thank you. Madam Chairman, may I ask her a question before yes, she gets away? Yes, ma'am, Miss Abbott. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you if you would like to have this next door to your home. Oh, it wouldn't bother me, no. I mean, I think they, she's already said that they're doing a, you know, time cap on it. It's not going to be a party city at the park. I think it's great, and as also a dog lover, even if they weren't supporting my rescue, I'd be there as a patron. For sure. I think it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Abbott. Could you state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, my name is Summer Hall. Uh, we live at uh, 2316 North Street. Uh, we're about a block and a half away from um, the water and the adult park. Um, we just wanted to state our support. We're extremely excited. There's not really a dog park that we can go to. But we need to keep the dog on a leash. Um, it can get a little overwhelming, but we're very excited. Uh, we personally, on our block, we have three bars, so it's never really been an issue with the noise. It's something you kind of just get used to. Um, so I don't think that would be an issue. Um, but we're very excited. Um, we'll hopefully get to meet a lot. Um, Thank you. Okay, um, are there any um, people here to speak against the part besides um, the attorney? And I'm going to allow you all to come up, state your name for the record, and you have three minutes to speak. Your name and address, please. First of all, thanks. Nice to be here. Uh, I've lived in Birmingham for most of my adult life, although my voice is not from Birmingham. <laughs> my name is Gary Tilton. Yeah, okay. I was the first resident at Avenue A. That is what's adjacent. I moved in on June 11th, 2020. And I Avenue A has grown to where it is and, and going farther to the bridge, if you know where the area is. The issue is the ability, ability for three things. One is noise. And you asked a great question. Thank you for asking that question. There's smell. The other is, even though this beer, I I'm, I'm, went to college a long time ago, I can't remember what I ate yesterday, but I remember we had a good time on beer too. <laughs> Safety issue. All those things affect our ability to, in, especially now when most people are working from home. My dog goes to a, de a doggy daycare, and I go all the way down to. Uh, They're enclosed. I can drive up, I can smell the dumpster outside, and I can hear the dogs inside. This is a completely enclosed. This is an enclosed. Dogs, to your question, all of you, if you invested in downtown Birmingham into this life, into creating what you are, what we're looking for, city life that's lovely and bring it back to the city like it used to be 30 years ago. Want this place next to yours? I want you to look at it from a resident standpoint. I can't sell my house, not now. I don't mean I couldn't sell it in the future, but I feel betrayed. I was never asked to come to any meeting, even before there was a lease or anything else. I was the first one there. First time I found out was when I saw a good dog on a sign outside the building. Thank you, sir. Do we have anyone else? Could you state your name and address for the record, please? My name is Russell Ivey. I live at 2339 First Avenue South. So I'm one of the residents that is right there adjacent. So there's the dog park, there's our driveway, and then there's my home. So that's about 20, 25 feet. Uh, one of the other residents is truly nine feet away with his structure. So 
I will tell you, I moved downtown from Helena in three acres, but it was very quiet. Um, I did not have a wife who lived in the seaboard. She's already downtown, and she knows the, the area. That not those kind of noises that we're opposed to. I mean, I think there's two kinds of noises that would jerk your head. That's a baby crying, and that's a dog barking. and they both make you tell. Great. My wife works inside, we both work inside the townhome. She's right there at the window that's going to be right in front of it. And my five-year-old boy is also going to be taking virtual classes on that same side of the house. Not that the other side of the house is going to be quieter. I don't know how he's going to attend class. I don't know how she's going to do her conference call. We're not opposed. We have a dog. We would like to take our dog to a dog park. But it just should not, never should have been built this close to our resident. And we believe that there's been violations done when I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. I know my wife is not going to be able to do that. The resident, please. I have a question because it, it is zoned to allow like metals manufacturing. So would that be more welcomed? If you can keep that to a tolerable level, level I think it is. I think the zoning always says, I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney, but it's, it's a nuisance. That's a nuisance. Can I clarify your your statement? Y'all would be okay with a metals manufacturing being your neighbor, but not the dog park. If it's not a new wow. Dave, you have one more question. Okay, Doctor. I just want to make a point. So the current zoning is really an artifact of um, history, and we're going through the city center master plan and the south tide framework plan and and so there you know it's currently in discussion to change the zoning to update the zoning for this entire area so um i, I think the current zoning is you know it's it's relevant but it's um you have to view it in context of history um Certainly, you know, this is not going to be a place where there's a metal manufacturer is going to want to locate. So um, I think that point is, is, is a bit of a non sequitur. Thanks. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Is uh, Director Thomas in from the Zoning Committee? Um, Director Thomas, is she here? have her to speak to the zoning yes I don't think he knows who we're asking for are you gonna allow another resident to speak yes Sir, can you state your name and address for the record, uh, Dwight please? Dwight Lockhart. I live at 2351 First Avenue South. I live in the Avenue A, I'm sorry, the Avenue A complex also. Um, and just want to reiterate, reiterate some of the things that have already been said. I mean, the noise issue is a big issue. And it's not like that we are, don't want to hear any noise at all. We all came downtown to be a part of the Birmingham community. And as part of that, you hear noises. I mean, all these units have rooftop patios, and that's one of the drawing features for them. So you can get out and enjoy the city. You can see the skyline of the city in the evening, in the morning. You hear things out here. You hear the trains going through. You hear sirens going through. You hear people walking on the rotary trail. You hear dogs barking out there. Those are not the kind of things we're talking about here. This is something that's going to happen seven days a week, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. 
going to be a constant noise issue that whole time. Uh, this is not a structure, as been said, that's got four solid walls. It's going to prevent sound from escaping the building. It's a tin building. The whole one end of it is wide open. I think it's reasonable to understand. Uh, and we think that, you know, that given that and the inconvenience and the issues causing that, I mean, we have a right as homeowners to have the ability to quietly enjoy our properties. And this is... I know the city council and the city fathers for the past 25 years have been trying to encourage people to come downtown. Okay, a vibrant Birmingham city with a large residential population. And people have started doing that. But in doing that, you guys have to be willing to help protect our interests. Us doing that. I mean, we moved in here. This was not on the table. This kind of structure, this kind of business was not on the table. Uh, probably none of these people would have bought in this, in this complex had we known the dog park was going to go up. I mean, this is something that's happened after the fact, after we all own properties here. And I think, as Councilman McClellan was talking about, we have to look at these zoning issues out of today. These zoning issues, like he said, are art artifact of past time. Somebody allowed a residential structure to be built in this building here. So we can't just, you, you can't now just you know, abdicate your responsibility to protect our ability to enjoy to our homes. We would hope that you would uh, not approve this license uh, today. Uh, like there's some other issues you need to further investigate, we would at least ask that you delay the approval of this license. Those things can be further uh, investigated. We all feel strongly about the fact that we feel like this is going to be a definite noise issue for us, and it's not like that we're opposed to any business going on. Restaurant, some sort of other development with the apartment across the street. Uh, I don't know of any issues off the top of my head with that development. Don't even know if we have a problem with the restaurant going here. It's the, it's the outdoor nature of this thing, the type of business it is, that we feel like it's just going to cause constant. prevent us from enjoying our homes, as you've heard, trying to work from home, which is. Thank so, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I think the issue um, and I'm one of the residents at 2337 First Avenue South. Um, the, I'll be very quick. The only thing I wanted to bring up is that I believe there has been, I like to believe the best in people. And in, when I first saw this was coming, I thought, you know what, we can work it out. And we contacted the developers as well as the owners of the dog park immediately to have a sit down. Uh, my concern is that there is a pattern of deceit in from the zoning variance to what we were told on our patio a few weeks by the by Mr. Clint that they would not do the doggy daycare. So they told us would you be appeased if we decided not to do the doggy daycare. I was told by two different owners and operators of the business not do the doggy daycare and today is the first time that I've heard they actually are moving forward with the doggy daycare. Our developer uh, offered to significantly lower the lease, price of the lease, if they would commit to scrapping the doggy daycare and they refused. So my, my point in this on the liquor license is that we're asking that it could at the very least just be delayed because there are potential for mediations in process where we could come to the table, but once the liquor license is received, there's no back to the table, and then we're left with only litigation options towards the development as the doggy day park because of the things that we were told along. Thank you. Any other counselors have any other questions? I do. Go ahead, Ms. Abbott. I was wondering why the committee had no recommendation Public safety. Pub, your, your committee. You had no recommendation on this item. I was just wondering why. Because I wanted to bring it to the full council. And so the issue was, we, we keep hearing it's a zoning issue. But the, the, the issue at hand here is the guys applying for, you know, a beer and, 
and uh, wine licenses. And so I recommended it that it came to the full council so everybody could hear, um, you know, the uproar, what is going on. Ms. Clark. So they, they have a right to, um, I guess, uh, operate it, but not to serve beer and wine yet. Is that? And so we're being asked to allow that to be leveraged for further peacemaking, I guess, between the parties <laughs> who are, I mean, because they have a right to, to operate is what I'm understanding. They can, they can open up and have doggy daycare and have um, people coming in the evenings um, to hang out with their dogs. Okay, so they just can't sell beer and wine yet. Yes, they have. They, they could offer water. If um, <laughs> the attorney will clarify that, they do have a current business license. Now what is before us is a off-premise, the beer license, correct? Correct, and, and Ms. Director Thomas can speak to the use of the building. Is she available? Morning, Council. Katrina Good morning. Thomas, I serve as Director of Planning, Engineering, and Permits. So, um, pursuant to the requirements of the liquor license, this location does meet zoning requirements. I don't know if there are any more specific questions, but um, it does meet zoning requirements to operate. Thank you. Any questions for me? I do. Um, so, because I think it's relevant to, to this case, where are we in terms of the, this is in the South Side framework plan area, correct? Right. Okay, and uh, as part of that framework planning process, I know that planning and zoning staff are reevaluating the zoning of all of the parcels in that South Side framework planning area. Where are we currently and um, is it safe to assume that there's gonna be significant changes in the zoning relative to the parcels all around the Rotary Trail? Yeah, we can, we, can, we can see there's definitely transition in the area. The area has transitioned from its current zone of light manufacturing and it's trending more towards a mixed use development type of area. Um, but even in that mixed use district, there will still be an allowance for this type of abuse and that's something that we'll have to evaluate in terms of amending the zoning ordinance but um, this area is trending away from a light manufacturing type of use okay and could you sp please speak to the, the the variance that the zba heard what exactly did the the property owner request as a variance so um should we? The, the ZBA is a separate me. issue. Attorney King. I, I just want to know in the context of, you know, everything that's been discussed today, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about, about, about a lot of issues. So can well, we just, you know, know what the, the, the variance was? So it's my recommendation if we want to go further, we go into executive session. So moved. Second. Over a dark part. And I would like to state under section Alabama State Code 3625A 7A3, we move to go into executive session to discuss potential litigation. Thank you. At this time, we'll take a vote to go into executive session for 15 minutes. Yes, sir. We have uh, Councilor O'Quinn and who was the second? Abbott. Abbott. Okay. Madam President, you said 15 minutes? Yes. All right, uh, let's, Councilor Abbott. Aye. Councilor Clark. Councilor Clark. Yes. Councilor Moore. Aye. Council Member O'Quinn. Yes. Council Member Tate. Aye. Council Member Williams. Aye. Council Member Woods. President Pro Tem Smith. Aye. Council Member President Alexander. Aye. At this time, we are recess executive session and we'll return in 15 minutes. Thank you.
Applicant McCorm. We've returned in from the executive session. At this time, can you call us back to order? Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Council Member Abbott. Present. Council Member Clark. Present. Council Member Moore. Good morning. Good morning. Council Member Quinn. Present. Council Member Tate. Present. Council Member Williams. Present. Council Member Woods. Present. President Pro Tem Smitherman. Here. President Alexander. Thank you. I, we have returned from executive session. There was no deliberation at that time. And now before us is still item number one. Ms. Tate, I believe at this point you were calling off. Um, we, are we ready for the vote or what is the next action? The next action is, Madam President, had uh, we move to call for a vote on right. this item, please. And we had a uh, first and a second. All right, at this time we'll call for the vote. Voting should be open. All right, thank you. That item passes. Next item. All right, next should be item six. Item six on page three. An ordinance authorizing and approving the mayor executed redevelopment agreement with BNB Construction Group, LLC, on which the city will convey approximately 4.87 acres of land known as the former Porto Armory property located at 5601 Porto Madrid Boulevard to BNB Construction Group, purchase price of $10,000, and BNB Construction Group will undertake a project, one, to develop a state-of-the-art incubator and shared space for the construction industry, which will bring construction trades together under one roof as part of a concept which will allow businesses to collaborate on projects marketed as a unit and share other resources, two, to relocate, relocate its headquarters to the property, and three, to create a one-stop shop for consumers seeking to improve their own properties, their own properties, and will further include a day laborer component where workers will have an opportunity to use the property as a base to make the services available for as much as $100 per day for flexible work. And this is an item of permanent operation, so in order to pass it today, I would need UC first. Motion for UC. Second. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion on the item. Second. All right. Motion. All right. Second, uh, Council Williams. Second by Smith. Yes. Right. All right. All right. Item is before you. All right. Thank you. At this time. Any questions, Madam President, members uh -huh. of the council? Well, okay, we did have this item did come before uh, economic development and budget and finance, and I do see that um, the um, representative is here for the item. So, um, did you want to let them talk a little bit about it? Did sure, you yeah, Vance, you want to come up and talk about it? Yes, and you'll give us your name and your relationship to the project. Thank you. My name is Vance Ballard. Help foster the development. They said they can't hear you, Mr. Ballard. You, you can either, if you feel comfortable, you could take your mask off. Yes. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the main components of the project is we're going to build an incubator similar to the other incubator downtown which fosters businesses except these businesses will be construction centric so any business that orbits around the construction industry whether it be a sheetrocker or a plumber or an electrician or a roofer or a concrete mason whatever uh, if they're looking to take that delicate first step from working from someone else to creating their own business this facility will help them foster that. We're not there to train them how to do their job. We're there to help them build their business should they decide to make that step. We initially look to start at least 10 businesses. Uh, I'm gonna be the anchor tenant. Uh, I'm the current owner of B&B Construction. We are located also on Porto Madrid and have been there slightly under 10 years. Uh, so I'm gonna move my business there um, as well. 
Thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Ballard? Um, is it a, um, I guess, what's the public benefit as you see it? I know you're gonna be helping to nurture new enterprise creation, but it, it looks like this is, we're selling it below the market value, so you'll be creating some public benefit uh, as a result of this agreement, right? Yes, we, uh, I, I feel like, and I think it's pretty nationally recognized that sort of a, the blue collar trades, if you will, are um, deeply needed. Uh, there needs to be a lot of growth in that industry right now. There's a shortage. And uh, I've spoken with some other sort of local, very reputable construction companies, um, Harbor, people like that, that are very also very interested in seeing the development of these trades. The Alabama Construction Institute is sort of across the street. They're a little bit more of a training type facility. But yeah, to answer your question directly, this is to help uh, local businesses that want to be birthed or created, give them an opportunity in their first sort of fragile couple of years to really get going. So they would graduate after, like out of your facility and so others could Correct. to make room for yeah. others. Our, our, our goal would be to get them going, get them stable, and then sort of bump them out of the nest and let the next crop come okay. in. Thank you. Any other questions? I know Councillor Williams wanted to make a statement, but Councillor Quinn. Yeah, uh, I just really wanted to um, make a statement also. Uh -huh. So. Um, I had the pleasure of getting to know Vance over the past few years, and uh, I represent Gate City, part of Brown Springs, East Lake, um, and and Vance has has been just a great community partner. I mean, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, businesses that exist in communities, and, but they're not in community with those neighborhoods. And Vance is um, known, you know, knows all the neighborhood leaders personally, um, interacts with people in the community. If, you know, I've had folks reach out to me seeking assistance and I've, you know, referred them to Vance and, um, you know, he's offered uh, advice. And so I, I just can't, you know, say enough um, about his character and, um, you know, he's been planning this project for a long time, dating back, you know, to the previous mayoral administration. Um, so i um, happy to, to see this move forward, but, you know, I will 100% vouch for Vance Ballard's character, and I know this this is going to be a great project. Thank you, Dr. Quinn. Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you, Madam President. You know, I really wanted to kind of echo what uh, Dr. O'Quinn just said. Um, uh, Vance has been a very integral role, uh, played an integral role in being a good neighbor in, uh, in the District 2 section. Uh, that borders Dr. O'Quinn's uh, uh, district. Um, not only does he uh, do a lot of work in the East Lake community, but he also does a lot of volunteer work, including picking up trash and doing all the things that no one really wants to do. He is very gracious with his resources in, in allowing that to happen. I think the first time that Mr. Ballard talked to me about this project was when I was a first when I was first elected the first term, either in 2017 or 2018. I, I don't remember when we first had that conversation. So I know that this has been a project that you've been looking forward to for a long time, um, and so I'm glad to see it come to fruition. But um, but to echo Dr. O'Quinn's statements, thank you for not just having your business in Birmingham. Uh, thank you for participating and making sure that you're bringing up the area that your business is in. That that um, is not true. That's not true. With we love all of our businesses, but you <laughs> but you go the extra mile, and it's it's noticed and it's appreciated. So thank you. Very good. Thank you, Miss Tate. Um, good e Good morning. I had the opportunity to actually, and I just want to echo what Councillor Williams and O'Quinn said, I saw you on the news. <laughs> and um, it was during some time when you were picking up some trash. But really just wanted to applaud you for, as Councillor Williams said, um, <clears throat> your business in Birmingham and also having an incubator for those blue-collar workers that are 
you know, want to birth their own businesses and give them the skills and tools that they need to, to go for. So I, I applaud you. I think this, this, this would be a great opportunity for up and com coming um, journeymen, plumbers, and people that want to birth their businesses. And you've been in the construction trade and able to give them, you know, that push to get out there and continue to, to you know, to birth others. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, we thank you, Mr. Ballard, and I believe Mr. Morris talks about it. Yeah, so uh, yesterday at the Education Committee, we had an opportunity to have the uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers uh, to come in and speak and <clears throat> really give us a presentation about their program and, you know, the work that they're doing and how, you know, they can help high school students to, you know, get on their feet and get that training side of learning how to, you know, go into the electrical and even welding field. Um, and I imagine that, you know, after uh, people have an opportunity to go through that program, uh, them finding out about you and being able to, you know, uh, come to your space would be um, beneficial for them to, you know, really just start their business and, and get out there and get on their feet. So. Um, I think what you're doing is awesome, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, being able to uh, see the pipeline uh, be created within our city. Thank you very much. Savage, you didn't have anything, did you? I thought you had a yes, little. Okay, go ahead. Really you sure did. I don't know you it followed it today. Well. Thank you. <laughs> go ahead, Ms. Abbott. Well, I just wanted to thank Mr. Ballard for his patience because <clears throat> us acquiring this building and then having to sit on it and let it decay for three years before he could get into business just seems insane. And I think we need to ask our lobbyists to help us in Montgomery to fix that law because bad things happened at that building while waiting for the three years to, to go past. I might just and, address that point because you yeah. brought that up last time. and I thought it would be relevant to additionally point this out. Not only was it three years, 20 years prior to that, there was a poison pill built into the sale of a federally backed state owned asset that pre prevents the divestion of that asset for 20 years, it must sit vacant. And that's a rule by the Armory Commission of the state of Alabama. So it's really been a 20 year plus the time it took to purchase it, plus the three-year additional poison pill built in for the city to turn. So in those 20, almost 25 years, you can imagine the devastating effects it's had on that abandoned building. So speaking directly to your point, yeah, I think sort of using common back of the envelope, common sense math would say you don't want a structure to sit vacant for that long. It's just naturally going to get torn to pieces. So. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, but I mean, to me, I mean, that's an issue that we're not considering at the moment, but we certainly need to consider it because another armory might go empty and then we'll have a decaying problem in our community. And it doesn't matter whose district it is, it's, it's a problem. And that place has been a problem the whole time I've been on the council and I haven't been here 25 years, but I'm getting close. <laughs> Anyway, but thank you. Thank you thank for, you. for you know, moving ahead. Thank you. Councilor Wood. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to applaud the creativity of the idea. I think that's really unique, something that's needed. Um, you know, I'm a contractor. I know, say, Huffman High School, we have a construction academy. And so you do have a lot of interest in, you know, people interested in construction and just to kind of continue to stand up places to uh, learn more, I think, will be impactful. So I just wanted to applaud the idea and excited about some life being breathed back into that building. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, Ms. Clark. I just wanted to um, also, having learned a lot about you through the comments, uh, congratulate you and really looking forward to continue, you know, the expanded impact of your being in that area on the residential structures in the area. It sounds like <clears throat> part of this is to make day labor available to residents in the area. So what sparked that was, um, a lot of people just sort of historically, legal or, or illegally, go to Lorna Road and just pick random people up to kind of do work. And so working in that area, I know the difference in 
making rent some days, some months, or paying your power bill some months may be as little as $100 or a couple of days worth of work. And so I just think it's nice to be able to try and present a way for people looking. I'm just sort of trying to bring buyers and sellers together to say, look, this is a great spot over here in the corner of the property. If you want to pick up some day labor, this is where you need to come. If you want to find some work, come over here. And sort of we'll try to help foster that. But I just think it's good to, to not let Borner Road be that only source. I'm not trying to create a, a problem, but I just think it's important to allow people to find work if they want it, especially in that area. Thank you. At this time, we're ready to call for the vote. All right, thank you, that item passes. The next item, Mr. Clerk, and would it be okay if we call seven and eight together? Same cup, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> item seven, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a neutral host lease agreement with new singular wireless PCS LLC, under which the city will lease to new singular wireless certain space at Boutwell Auditorium, including the airspace, to install and operate a neutral host distributed antenna system to provide wireless services to the Boutwell Auditorium and its patrons for a base rent of $1,000 per month and for a term of 10 years plus with two possible extension terms of five years each. And item number eight, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a neutral host lease agreement with New Singular Wireless PCS LLC. On which the city will lease to New Singular Wireless certain space at the Crossplex facility consisting of 63 square feet in room T. 165, including the airspace above such room, to install and operate a neutral host distributed antenna system to provide wireless services to Crossplex facility and its patrons for a base rent of $1,000 per month for a term of 10 years, plus with two possible extension terms of five years each. And both of these items are permanent operation items. I need UC to pass them both today. Second. Williams and Councilor Moore. Yes. All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Hello. Second. Other man and Williams. Williams. Item is before you. All right, thank you very much. Um, Chief, if you would allow your, I uh, believe this is I submitted so by the city attorney. So do you have an attorney here to talk about what's going on? Thank you. Yes, ma'am, Madam President, Attorney Jim Stanley is here to speak to the item. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Stanley. I know we did have some questions at pre-council uh, uh, and we ask about the neutral host lease. So just tell us what we're doing here at both of these facilities. In both facilities and if, you know, you've gone to uh, places where there are concerts, sporting events, uh, especially pre-COVID when there are larger crowds, you often have trouble getting a good signal, for example, on your cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had that issue in particular uh, I understand the Crossplex, uh, speaking to Mr. Perez, the director, for example, uh, mobile ticketing has become the end thing now. And apparently they've had some patrons who've had trouble getting the signal when they're coming in. It really slows the process down. Attributed to antenna system, uh, and I'm not the technology expert. We do have people here who can explain that better than I can. But what that does will take the signal and distribute it through small antennas throughout the facility with the end result that the, uh, the staff and, and the people on site, as well as the patrons, will get uh, be better wireless communications. Uh, so that's what we're doing both at Boutwell uh, and at Crossplex, and, and especially in advance of the World Games. This is a technology that we want to have available. Thank you very much. I don't see any questions, speakers. Go ahead. Questions for Mr. Stanley, Councilor Quinn. Yes. Um I don't think this is the case, but I just got to ask the question. We're, we're not putting a cell tower on top of Boutwell or the Crossplex, right? No, these are uh, very small antennas. I think there's usually typically a small roof-mounted antenna, and then there are, are lines with smaller antennas that go to strategic points throughout uh, the facility. You, I think you should have diagrams show those. I, I have them. Barely enough engineering expertise to kind of understand what, what they're showing. But it's, uh, it's uh, an array of small antenna that 
to spread the signal throughout the facility. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. We're ready for the vote. Thank you very much. Both of those items pass. Next item. Item 40. Resolution accepting the unit price bid of CP Construction LLC, Birmingham, in the amount of $178,090 for TWG venues, ADA improvements in uh, road, this being the lowest and best in the right of way, this being the lowest and best bid submitted and authorized the mayor to enter into a contract with Dunn Construction Company Incorporated and substantially the form contained within the bid documents and in accordance with said bid, providing the total compensation payable under the contract and not seeing the appropriation. Motion, please. Second. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, this is recommended by the Director of Capital Projects. So, Chief, do you have someone that can speak to us to this item? If, if, thank if, you. If the council has any questions, I can do my best to answer those questions. I think Councilor Quinn had a question I, I gave him the answer to it, so I just want to make sure he's satisfied. Y yeah, so my, my question was really um, in relation to where where this is. So, just for the benefit of around uh, several of the uh, World Games venues. Um, I, I gotta take the opportunity to say that, you know, uh, in at least one of these locations, uh, residents have been on me about getting these ADA ramps uh, fixed. And, and I'm not just talking about, you know, your average pedestrian, I'm talking about folks who are confined to a wheelchair. Um, so, this is yet another example of how um, the World Games is having this effect of making things happen. So I'm happy for it. Thank you, Dr. O'Quinn. I think we're all shaking our heads. That is a good thing about this, so thank you. All right, any other questions or uh, statements about this? We're ready for the vote then, counselors. Thank you. All right, thank you, that item passes. Next item. The item 53. On page 14. A resolution setting a public hearing March the 29th, 2022, considered adoption of an ordinance to amend the zoning district map of the city of Birmingham. Case number ZAC 2021-22. To change zone district boundaries from A1 Shelby County, Agriculture District to C2 General Commercial District filed by Arlington Properties Incorporated. Applicant on, um, representing the owners, Hannah Family Partnership LTD, Omar Green, Touchstone, William Andrew Newton, Anna Newton Kirby, and Catherine Quinn Newton for property located at 4641 Highway 280. It's situated in the southwest quarter of Section 36, 36 Township 18 South Range 2 West Birmingham. Motion. Second. Yes. I, item before you. All right, counselors, this is the setting a public hearing for March 29, 2022. Any discussion on the item? We'll call for the vote. The vote should be up. Thank you. We've set that public hearing for March 22, 2022. Next item. Actually, item 54, a resolution setting a public hearing March 29, 2022 to consider the adoption of ordinance to amend the district map of the city of Birmingham, case number ZAC 2021-23, to change zone district boundaries from D3 single family district to Q C2 qualified general commercial district filed by Bush Hills Connections. Applicant representing the owner Birmingham Board of Education for property located at 1030 4th Street, 4th Terrace West and situated in the southeast quarter of section 33, township 17 South, range three West, Birmingham. Second. All right, same as last time. Item before you. All right, counselors, this is a resolution setting a public hearing on March 29th, 2022. Any questions regarding this public hearing? We're ready for the vote. All right, thank you very much. We've set that public hearing for March 29th, 2022. Next item. 
the item 55, same page, a resolution to set a public hearing March 29, 2022, pursuant to section 2-2-62 General Code of the City of Birmingham to receive public comments on a proposed ordinance and map reapportioning the council districts due to a change in popula population evidenced by the 2020 federal population census. Please note on the uh, resolution itself, there's a change in the, uh, into, uh, well, the receiving address, I guess, for individuals to mail or uh, email information. It should be BC, it's um first paragraph at the end should be BCC Census 2020. That's BCC Census 2020 at BirminghamAL.gov. Move the item. Second, I thought it was 20, 20, is it 20 or 22? 2020. 2020, all right, thank you, Census of 2020 Census. All right, thank you, Councilors. This item is before us, and this is setting a public hearing uh, for our review of the proposed ordinance and map that we will be uh, proposing to the public for reapportioning re the council districts. Um, it is our legal authority to develop a redistricting map for the city of Birmingham, and this occurs each decade by the city council. What we have done is adopted a draft map that defines the nine single member districts that would elect the members of the city council as well as the board of education through the completion and reporting of the 2020 census. The census, of course, as we all know, was delayed in some way due to the pandemic and uh, getting people actually out to uh, go ahead and uh, report to the census where they were living as of April 1st, 2020. According to our required ordinances, a, we are required to adopt a new map using that information, particularly the information that would help us to balance populations in compliance with the U.S. Constitution's equal population principle and other applicable laws. We enlisted the assistance of expert consultants Prim Card Consulting, who is on the phone with us today, who organized and presented the initial census data that was re released to us in August of 21. This was showed population shifts in each district, and the consulting team recommended guidelines that synthesized the legal and policy standards for the council in making any updates to our current district map. The council reviewed and approved these guidelines, and councilors subsequently provided their input that would inform the development of the formal draft that we would be presenting to the public if approving this public hearing. If finally approved and enacted by the city of Birmingham, the new election district boundaries set forth in the proposed districting map will have immediate effect and will be used in the next regularly scheduled city council and board of the education elections that are due in 2025, as well as any sp special elections that have to be called to fill vacancies in these offices. We've led this process through committee, and those committee members included Councilor Pro Tem Smitherman, Councilor Williams, and myself as a three member of the Census 2020 and Redistricting Committee. As I've already stated, we've had an opportunity, two opportunities for councilors to sit with the consultants and draw this draft map. It is important that I do want to acknowledge to the public and to the councilors that this is a draft map that we are presenting to you for public input as well as additional input by the councilors. So councilors, we're entertaining today the authority to develop this map and present it to the public. Any comments or questions? Dr. Quinn. Yes. Um, so am I, am I to understand that the, the map that as we have it currently is what's going to be presented to the public? Yes, and we have Krim Card, uh, our consultant on the line. Dr. Okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, that's fine. I, I'll just, yes. you know, Go ahead. follow that up with, um, I do want the public to be aware that uh, Councilor Moore and myself have spoken about some changes that we would agree to. And I, Councilor Abbott and I have also spoken about 
um, some adjustments that we uh, both agree to. So um, to anyone who might be listening, um, just please know that uh, what the map you see in its current state, um, there are some, some minor adjustments that I'm aware of that at least the council uh, the counselors who are affected um, are agreeing to. So uh, it's a draft um, and therefore could change significantly, maybe. And that is fair, and I appreciate you for bringing that up and making that known to the public. Um, as part of the two reiterations that each counselor had with the consultants, there again, there was the draft map that's been presented to us. I believe, and I'll ask uh, Dr. Creighton to uh, just explain, and I think this is uh, worthwhile to explain to the public. Um, we did have about 13, I believe, um, differences or, or where we all needed to agree as to items, what, help me with the word, conflicts, conflicts thank you, and um, that we have, in each in our own way, we have discussed with each other, and there were some that were outstanding, so that is fair, and what we'd ask each counselor when they had that conflict, that these two counselors or three counselors would sit and uh, discuss or talk with the consultant as uh, a way to resolve that conflict. So thank you for bringing that up. Dr. Creighton, did you want to address just any of that process so that we're all clear as to how we're proceeding with this draft map? Thank you, Madam President. And thank you. Um, I'm pleased to be with you again. I'll be brief and just say what you all have said is um, an accurate representation of where we are. Uh, there have been a lot of different uh, considerations where there was agreement. They were incorporated into the um, draft. Uh, the, as it has been pointed out, there are, I think by my count, about three uh, changes that did not make this, uh, this particular iteration. And we can talk about sort of the pluses and minuses of those. But the expectation is that there's an ongoing process even with this draft being in, and that is subject to the council's consideration along with public input. Um, but we think overall it is useful and hopeful for the public to see uh, the draft that is uh, a compendium of all of the input that we've gotten so far from the council. And uh, we can go forward and get at least a non-confusing presentation of what could or couldn't um, be the best representation of how districts should be drawn in the city. They comply with law, they comply with the guidelines as present, and it is subject to your further review uh, at the public hearing. Thank you, Dr. Creighton. I don't see any other speakers. Do we have anyone else that, oh, Ms. Abbott? Go ahead, thank you. Yeah, and I, I would just like to see us put the map out that people have agreed to, since we have some council members who are in agreement, instead of putting out the map that is not what everyone has agreed to. It seems like since our committee of the whole meeting, that could have been done. I know that part of our process it's following the committee of the whole was a requirement that we have a map that was presented to the city clerk within a specific time of the uh, release of the census data to the council. Um, as far as, I um, don't know if I need to get ask Attorney Bernard, with us presenting this draft map, and if there are other reiterations out there as we put this to the public, I'd just like to ask Ms. Answer Ms. Abbott's request. We do have the one map, and that was our, what we put in our guidelines was to release. Thank you, Julie Bernard, Office of City Attorney. Um, the, um, really what all that is before the council today is setting the hearing. Um, the committee and, yeah, the, the redistricting committee and the committee of the whole, you know, voted to move forward, you know, the map that had been presented. Um, I understand there's a map on the wall and there are other resources that are being developed. Um, my understanding is those will be available tomorrow. Um, and with the map online, uh, there's still some work that's going to be able to, to, ongoing, to get an interactive, maybe get a GIS overlay or something that people could, you know, like zoom in. But there, my understanding is there will be a PDF 
but at this point there's one plan that's been presented the council must have a public hearing before they vote on that plan and that is the only thing that's before the council today is voting on holding that public hearing if there are changes to the plan after that you know that will have to be examined it probably would be a good idea to have just another hearing at least another period of public information before you vote on any changes to the plan um, but you would you know you could make alterations based on what comments you hear from the public hearing did i answer i don't know if i answered the question exactly so go ahead Councilor Williams just wants to clarify as a member of the committee. Go ahead. So, if 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 the if the map has these changes that we're talking about, that is different from whatever's posted on the wall, um, we can still push forward that map, the map with the changes at any time, right? Uh, so is the question being asked that there are going to be changes to the map before the public hearing? I think it's preferable that the map that you advertise when you set out this notice is the one that is going to be discussed at the public hearing so that somebody goes online, you know, say on Thursday and looks at that map, but then a different map is out there on Tuesday and they haven't gone back and looked at it until they get to the hearing on March 29th. You need to be settled on what map goes forward for but, the public hearing but at the now public once you get hearing, to the public changes. hearing if you hear things that make you want to make changes then but I, I would recommend that the map that is being advertised and out for public view be the one now I know there are some minor technical changes that are going through anytime you have GIS data shapefile talking to shapefile from two different systems there sometimes winds up being little corrections just to get lines right it doesn't make any substantive change um, and that process is is ongoing and I'm not sure if that's going to be all completely done but it'll be the substance will be the same it would just be minor technical corrections so after the public hearing and let's say that there's some changes that the council thinks that should be made because of the public hearing, that's fine and those changes can be made after we hear from the public. And then there's no expectation, you know, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you know, you could potentially say this is the plan. If you've got some alternate plan in mind, you may want to put that out there. You know, if you, if you already know where those changes may be made that might make a change to the substance of the plan. Um, but so we could have two maps out then. You've submitted one to the clerk within the time frame that was set Correct. but if we wanted to submit another one before the public hearing as long as that's clear on and, and it's advertised as provided in the notice going forward um, you know that that it's that it's there that it's not something that oh you pop up on March 28th the day before the hearing Understood. that it's posted all simultaneously throughout the whole period got it all right thank you so our, let me ask this. So our action uh, when we met as a committee of the whole and it's a redistricting and we voted at that time to follow the process and guidelines for the one draft map. Is that what we're considering is trying to uh, create a second map? Because our agreement was by vote was that we would have the one draft I would, map. I, yeah, I would recommend that you go forward with what you voted on and what you did with your guidelines. If there's something that you foresee that there might be substantive changes that you want to consider at the public hearing, you could post it. You say this is not the proposal, but these are some changes that are, you know, that might be recommended um, at the hearing. You could do that, but you've got one map. That is one proposal. That's what's going forward. Um, anything else that you want to do you need to clarify this this is not the proposal but these you know these have been you know some suggested potential changes I it, I don't want to confuse the public 
you know, it, it, it becomes a question of, is it more confusing if you just have that one map out there while in your mind you're thinking, we probably are, are gonna make these changes, you know, at the public hearing, um, yeah. Right. Thank you, Ms. Bernard. Um, councilors, I, I would like for us to still consider the actions we've taken so far. We do have the one map that is, uh, we have proposed as a draft. We left with the understanding we would continue the conversations with counselors where there was conflict, and we'd also receive information from the public as far as um, our final decision of how we would propose the map. And so what we have before us today is setting that public hearing where we release the draft map. And keep with consideration, there are those ongoing conversations with counselors, and if you've made some agreements, that would be great. And, um, but we'll also want to hear from the public as we entertain that at the public hearing that we're setting forth for today. Ms. Clark. Thank you, Madam President. I was wondering how we would uh, be promoting to the public that this map is out there. If you could just sort of tell us what sort of the communication uh, yes. communications plan is. Yes, thank you. We're creating a landing page that will be up in the next two days that will include the electronic version of the map. Uh, we will have a, as it's already been described, we will have an email address where we would entertain those public comments. I encourage the public, as soon as we put that information up, that you start to feed us those comments so that we will have an opportunity to consider those prior to the public meeting. We will also have our PIO department is working on messaging, again, to inform the public of where those maps would be virtually as well there'll be the uh, paper map that will be posted. Currently we have one outside of the council chambers and the plan is also to put one in the central library. So there'll be multiple opportunities both virtually and you can come down to city hall or to the central library to view the map. And of course to receive that information from the public through that comment section on the landing page. Any other questions? Ms. Abbott, is that a new one for you? Or is it still up on my screen? Well, actually, I never finished. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I, well, it's such a long time ago. Um, my understanding at our Committee of the Whole meeting we had last week, was it last week? Was that the changes that people had agreed to would be made. And then when we didn't receive anything and I inquired, they sounded like they didn't know what which planet they were on. Okay. So has the map, have these maps already been published? No, advertised? the maps have not been published. They've not been advertised. To my knowledge, and Mr. Creighton and the clerk can uh, agree, we have sent the draft map to the clerk as required by law and by ordinance. Now we're setting the public hearing where we will place the draft map for view by the public and for comments. And my understanding of an action we took at the Committee of the Whole was that we would only release this one draft map and we would come back today and set the public hearing for release of the draft map. Well, I guess I'd have to watch the video to see if I misunderstood. Thank but anyway, you. it doesn't matter. Um, I do think that it would be a good idea to post a copy of the map in all libraries instead of just the central library because a lot of people don't go to the central library. They go to their local. And I'm sure that they all have a piece of wall somewhere where they could post it. Well, it certainly entertain that um, as a part of the process and the cost, I know we, um, they've, the consultants have been assisting us with ensuring that we have those copies. So that is something we can entertain counselors if that was what everyone would like to be sure that we have those at all of those locations. Any questions or comments about that? At least the regional. At least the regional, I think that's a good thing, the regional libraries. All right, good suggestion, Ms. Abbott, thank you. At this time, counselors, if we're ready to call for the vote for setting the public hearing for March 29th with the release of the draft map. We're ready for the vote. I, I missed a second. I had Dr. O'Quinn as the mo mover. Yes. Pro 
Tim Smith? Yeah. Thank you. All right, we're ready. Yes, yeah, so we actually wanted at 5.30, but I want to be sure we, we post all that information all at the same time so we don't get any uh, confusion. And the numbers. I'm sorry. It's actually there. 5.30. Mm -hmm. And the resolution, it sure is 5.30. All right, we call for the vote. Thank you, counselors, uh, for setting this public hearing. Mr. Uh, McDaniels, could you give us a timeline on when we think the landing and that this information would be ready from PIO and the public? I, I would like for them to have a time that they would be able to start looking for this information. And I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know PIO is working for, with that. Oh, you did. I did. Notwithstanding the reports that came from the council today, Uh, met that requirement. We will give him a full packet uh, to include a draft of the ordinance that reflects the redistricting. There will be three appendices attached to that. Uh, those appendices will be the maps, the guidelines, and the census tract data per district. Um, <clears throat> we left the map um, in the hallway uh, pursuant to the council's agreement on the items that were previously approved from your meetings on the 9th and the 10th. And the 13 proposed changes will come at a later date. So I think that's already been stated. So what we'll provide in addition to the, I guess, composite or citywide map are individual district maps. And you'll have two iterations of those maps for public view. Those iterations will be one with neighborhoods laid on top and the other will be uh, just a plain map so citizens can see their streets. Um, tomorrow, uh, with work and guidance from the clerk and the city attorney, uh, the landing page on our website will be live. That information has already been built, but we've been waiting for the council to approve the public hearing uh, before we release that information. Um, most of the information that you've covered in your public meetings will be posted on the landing page. And that information uh, will be accessible and downloadable to the public. Uh, have I answered your question? Or if there's another question? That was it, thank you. I just wanted to be sure we had a plan laid out for uh, giving this information. Councilor. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Councilors, please note, in the revised proposal, we weren't able to uh, change it at the last minute, but uh, for District 2, they will be losing 20% uh, of their population. So that should be noted in the revised proposal as part of the notes. Thank you. And what I passed out, Councilors, is a revised summary of the process and um, the proposal uh, that we have agreed upon with the draft map and what um, the process and the focus and the summary of what's happening with each district. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. I appreciate everyone. Uh, I believe Mr. Clerk is gone. That's the end of our agenda. <laughs> and I believe so. He's looking for something for us. Um, if we could go ahead now and counselors, if you would allow, if um, we could have counselor comments at this time. So if anyone who has comments, sorry, with you, Ms. Clark. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, we had a fantastic time this past Saturday in the Rising West Princeton neighborhood for the continuation of our District 8 Be Litter Free campaign. The weather was beautiful and we over 70 volunteers came out to pick up over 750 pounds of litter. Um, we were grateful to the rising, we are grateful to the Rising West Princeton Neighborhood Association led by Costella Adams Terrell, the Friends of Rickwood, Magic City Blightbusters, Municipal Court, uh, Princeton Hospital celebrating 100 years with 100 days of service and United Way's Hands on Birmingham and our ever faithful uh, partner, the Black Warrior River Keepers, for making this event very successful. 
We look forward to next month's cleanup in the Thomas neighborhood uh, in March, and uh, that date is to be, deter to be confirmed with the neighborhood. Uh, neighborhood meetings this week, uh, we have two uh, meetings in District 8 tonight. Uh, at 5 p.m., Congresswoman Terry Sewell will host a town hall at the Five Points West Regional Library. Uh, that starts around 5. I think the media starts at 5, and the actual meeting starts at 5.30. So we encourage um, our residents and interested persons uh, to come out and, and greet the Congresswoman. Also, the Bush Hills Neighborhood Meeting, uh, regular neighborhood meeting is tonight at 6.30 via Zoom, and you can go to www.bushhills.org to, to get the link uh, and Zoom information. And so sports are alive and well in District 8 on March 1st at 1 p.m. Uh, the Miles College Golden Bears baseball team will take on the Montevallo Falcons at Rickwood Field. In fact, Miles will play a number of games this season at America's oldest ballpark, right in District 8 in the Rise West Princeton neighborhood. Uh, at the Birmingham Crossplex, the NCAA 2022 Division I Indoor Track and Field Championships will take place on March 11th and 12th, and we encourage you to not only support our young people in their athletic pursuits, but also enjoy these wonderful uh, sports facilities that are in District 8. Thank you, and uh, we had our first quarterly leadership summit last week, well, last Saturday, well, not this past Saturday, but last Saturday, and Kim prepared a quick, fun video that we'll just show quickly to wrap up our report. Thank you. preparing for our first quarterly leadership summit and this is all of the elected leaders in district 8 neighborhoods and also the community presidents and we just want to get together to vision uh, for for the future of the district things that we can dream about together and and try to accomplish over the next four years so we'll do it quarterly so that we can sort of monitor our progress uh, maybe add to the vision as we go along. We have one of the best business working relationship with our neighborhood, and that is in the city of Birmingham. I'm going to ask people to go on a complaint that for today, just for a few hours. But but if there's something that, that, that you really need to bring light to, there's a map, and we've got red and green stickers, so we can point out the things we love and some things that aren't so good that we want to stop or, or fix. So we got two big topics. So we've got environmental stewardship, and we've got a panel of experts who are related to that topic, including some of the city staff who are working in that issue. And then we have uh, development opportunities, so district-wide development opportunities. That's what I'm hoping the spirit of this meeting can be, a time away from the day-to-day -day complaints and the difficulties and challenges that we're faced with every day, and just to kind of step outside of that and be able to uh, do our crystal balling together and see the future, a brighter future. And for more from the Birmingham City Council, follow along with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay safe, Birmingham. That concludes my report. Thank, Thank you, you Councilor Clark. Councilor Moore. Uh, yes, so um, on February 23rd, this Wednesday, uh, the Norwood Neighborhood Association will have uh, their meeting uh, at 6 p.m. They will have a uh, Zoom call. Uh, if you would like, you could give our office a call uh, to find out what that Zoom link is. Um, we also will have uh, the Birmingham Public Library is also doing the free college fair on February 26th. Uh, at the central branch. Uh, it begins at 12 p.m. And so uh, anybody who would like to participate, please show up at that time. If you would like any more information, you can call 205-304-1167 uh, for more information. Uh, and just for you know clarity's sake, uh, the central branch library is located at 2100 Park Place, Birmingham, Alabama, 35203. Um, 
We also have uh, Hayes K-8 through uh, is going to be kicking off their positive behavior intervention and supports celebration. Um, it's a month-long initiative to promote positive behavior throughout the school. Uh, please call 205-231-8900 for more information if you would like to get involved. Um, on yesterday, uh, myself, Councilor Tate, as well as Councilor Clark had an opportunity to uh, go to the kickoff for the AG Gaston Conference uh, and speak to several different uh, businesses in the city uh, just to kind of discuss, you know, uh, what could be done and, you know, what could we as city councilors do to, to help to move things forward for them. And so um, glad that they, they came out and I'm appreciative of uh, um, the opportunity to go and speak at the uh, AG Gaston conference kickoff with uh, yeah, with uh, with all the businesses that were there. Um, and then lastly, like I said, just wanted to kind of reiterate, um, I know at the Education Committee uh, on yesterday, we had an opportunity to have, you know, um, the International Brothers Brotherhood of Electrical Workers uh, to come out. And I encourage everybody in the city, please go and check out, you know, the Education Committee meeting that, you know, took place yesterday. A lot of great information for, you know, uh, anybody who is, uh, interested in, you know, becoming uh, an electrical worker or learning how to weld um, or working with sheet metal. Um, it's a great program. I want to say five-year program. You go to school one day a week uh, and, you know, the cost of books is only $500. Um, and I think there may be some other minimal cost, you know, associated with uniforms and, you know, other tools and supplies. But um, at the end of that five years, you have an opportunity to make, you know, $27 an hour uh, uh, working. And so um, I just think that it's a great program uh, that's located in Ingle Nook. Um, and it's a hidden gym mm -hmm. that most people may not know about. And so, um, like I said, definitely connecting it with, you know, what we saw here with Mr. BNB <coughs> Constructions. Uh, it's just a great opportunity to create a pipeline in our in our city for uh, folks who would like to to work. So that concludes my report. Thank you very much. And I was uh, happy to see that you had them listed on your agenda at that uh, committee meeting. So thank you for bringing that information to the public. Like you said, it is a hidden gem over there. Mm -hmm. And when um, I was over there, I think that was a year or so ago that we went over. And um, just to, you think of what opportunities those students have before them um, with the skills that they are being trained and at the cost or um, how they're able to attain those skills uh, through that organization. So we're thankful for them. Thank you for bringing that information. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Abbott. Thank you, Madam President. The uh, Planning and Zoning Committee will meet tomorrow on February 23rd at 3.30 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Um, the Redmont Neighborhood Association will meet tomorrow at five o'clock at the Botanical Gardens. And next Monday we have at 6.30 the Crestwood South Neighborhood Association meeting via Zoom. For additional information on District 3, please visit District 3 the number three, dot com. And yes, the World Games are coming. Okay. <laughs> and, and, the, and the improvements to the neighborhood around the venues are very much appreciated. You know, it, it, I guess it makes me a little bit sad that we have to have the World Games in order to get things fixed. Mm -hmm. But I'll take it any way I can get it. I'm with so you on that. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Ms. Abbott. Dr. O'Quinn. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Fountain Heights Neighborhood Association will have a meeting tonight uh, via conference call at 6 p.m. Please call our office at 205-254-2679 to get the call-in information if you want to participate in that. Uh, Crestwood North Neighborhood Association uh, will also be meeting tonight at 6.30 at Girls Inc. Um, in Crestwood North. The address is 5130 8th Court South. Um, in particular, I know that the chair of the Park and Rec Board is planning to uh, attend that meeting to hear um, 
neighborhood resident uh, comments on a proposal to um, reconfigure the tennis courts at Crestwood Park. Um, the, the neighborhood has a, approved a resolution to uh, make those improvements, but uh, the, the, the chair of the board um, just wants to, to hear directly from residents. So um, that's gonna be happening. Um, also, uh, tonight, so tonight's a good night to be civically engaged. There's tons of opportunities. Um, also tonight, ALDOT will be hosting a, a public meeting um, from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, where public can come and get additional information uh, regarding a proposal to um, do paving on I-20 uh, between um, the 5920 interchange uh, eastbound uh, where I-20 and 59 split at Woodlawn. Uh, they wanna pave all the way uh, basically to the um, Irondale border, but more importantly, uh, they wanna hear from the public about a proposal to close the First Avenue North exit mm -hmm. from I-20. So this is exit 130B. Um, if you're headed uh, that way at the 2059 split, if you take I-20, this is the second exit that you know goes off and comes back around to First Avenue North. Um, so again, that's going to be taking place from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m tonight at Social Venture uh, on First Avenue South in Woodlawn. The address is 5529 First Avenue South. Um, if you would like to, you, you can also get additional information and make um, public comment at www.al.involved.com. Um, and you can also leave a three minute voice comment at 205-327-4946. And finally, um, we uh, will be having transportation committee meeting uh, next Monday, um, the 28th, I believe. Um, at 2 p.m. and uh, it's my understanding that uh, Department of Transportation will be coming to us uh, regarding uh, interstate lighting uh, maintenance mm -hmm. and also um, the Birmingham On Demand presented by VIA. Um, we're nearing the end of our current uh, contract period. So, um, I believe they'll be coming with a proposal to extend that contract. Um, so with that, that's the... Uh, what's the time and date of that meeting, your transportation meeting, I'm sorry. It is uh, two o'clock, uh, Monday, February 28th. All right, thank you very much. Councilor Tate, do you have any comments for your district? I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Yes, uh, tonight the neighborhood meetings, Dolomite will meet tonight, 6 p.m. via conference call. The number is 602-580-9525, code 3789426. Inner Ridge will meet Thursday at 5.30 via conference call. That number is 564-888-5518. The code is 818-017. And Inslee will meet this Thursday 6 p.m. via conference call, the number is 564-888-5518, and the code is 818-017. Please note this meeting was changed due to the inclement weather on last week. Announcements, Public Safety Committee will meet today at 1 p.m. here in the chambers. The next Public Safety Meeting will be Tuesday, March the 8th at 1 p.m. Submissions for this meeting will be submitted must be submitted to Brandon McRae by Thursday, March 3rd at 4 p.m. And also, I will be issuing a resolution on behalf of myself in the city of Birmingham to the Malachi Wickerson Middle School Schools Girl Basketball Team on tomorrow at 1 o'clock for the team's outstanding basketball season. The less 
move sixth grade girls champion is a proud accomplishment that I want all students to pursue within our community. I'll just have one more final uh, thing to say, Madam President. Yes, um, I just want to send my condolences out to all of the, the families um, over the weekend with all the, you know, the gun violence that we have had. And it has really just vexed my spirit like tremendously. And, you know, as um, the, the chair of public safety, I, you know, h have experienced the other side, um, never, you know, experienced being a, a victim of gun violence, but I do know what the other side is like and for individuals that are traveling down the path um, that they are taking, um, I would highly, um, you know, just say to the parents to really, really just hone in on, on your child's social media, because I've had an opportunity to look at some of these young people's social, social media and just am floored with the things that I see with them, you know, um, flash, you know, just guns and money. These are young people. And so I really just want to say uh, this comment that the increase in gun violence in Birmingham and throughout the city continues to add a layer of tragedy onto an already painful times for our communities, whether motivated, motivated by gang violence, we heard, heard the mayor talk about domestic violence here this morning, are made conflicts, their incidents are traumatizing our neighborhoods, ripping families apart. We must come together as a collective and advocate for peace because the chief can't do it by himself. The mayor certainly cannot do it. Uh, we all have a charge and a duty to keep and must take responsibilities as individuals. Let me be real clear here today. Justice and peace are never found on the other side of a bullet. What you have are communities being destroyed, lives lost, families broken, jails and prison cells are filling up at an all-time high. What I want to say to the people and these young people that are ripping havoc through communities and people that are shooting people cowardly, that violence is not the answer to whatever is ailing you. So I'm just, you know, just asking everybody, play your role, play your part. If you see something, say something. And so it is really time that we reimagine what our communities look like. And I know that we got to get a lot of things uh, in place, um, a lot of initiatives. I, I am making some, some moves, talking to experts around the country. So I'm going to be uh, planning some things uh, coming forth. Thank you, Councilor Tate. Councilor Williams. Thank you, Madam President. Southeast Lake Neighborhood Meeting will be uh, via Zoom Monday, February 28th at 6 p.m. Crestwood South, as mentioned earlier, will also be uh, Zoom same day, but 30 minutes later at 6.30. And then Huffman will be 30 minutes after that via Zoom same day at 7 <laughs> o'clock. So lots of meetings in District 2. That's Thank all you. I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Woods, are you virtual today or do you have comments? Uh, virtual announcements, but Thank have you. a have a comment that we, yes, we must speak on. Many of you know over in District 1 on the eastern side of town, northeast, um, Huffman High School sits there right in the heart of the district. And we're uh, really proud of those young men. Yesterday won the Northeast Regional uh, Championship. And they will be traveling to the BJCC next Wednesday uh, to take on the winner of uh, Spanish Fort and McGill Toolin. And so looking forward to that. I know the last time they came to the BJCC, uh, not so long ago, just a couple of, a couple of years ago, we're here, uh, won the title. But I think I was standing with Pro Madam Pro Tem and the mayor. And I'm normally, you know, normally everybody sees me pretty calm and laid back, but we're, we're having, really pulling for the team to win out there. And they were looking at me like, who are you? And so, uh, but really proud of those guys, Coach Steve Ward. Uh, really invest a lot. I mean, they, they work out year round. Um, and the thing I really like about uh, what Coach Ward does is his players get better every year. And so it's, it's, they're not just on the team. Each and every kid gets better. Uh, kids that barely played last year are contributing significant minutes this year. And so it's really just a, a, a joy to really see those kids uh, get better each year and matriculate. And uh, we'll be pulling for them in the final four. And uh, Ramsey plays today. And so 
uh, we'll be pulling for them to make it. Uh, last time Huffman won the championship, Ramsey was also there in the Final Four, so we want to uh, keep everything the way it was. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, Counselor, and congratulations to those Huffman Vikings and Coach Ward. Thank you. Counselor Pro Tim. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I was actually gonna say congratulations to Huffman for making the Final Four. Uh, the Ramsey boys are actually playing as of now to make it to the Final Four. They're up by two. Uh, <laughs> now my little niece is there, so I've been asking, I was like, have we won yet? <laughs> Cause they actually lost by one um, in the Sweet 16, which I hate that for her, but I'm very excited that we have some of our schools in the Final Four, so. Um, also speaking of Ramsey, Ramsey High School Department of Theater and Dance and myself and Red Mountain Theater present Imagine, Imagine so it's a Black History Month program where they'll be doing music, dance, poetry, and honoring a uh, prolific African-American artists. Uh, it'll be this Wednesday tomorrow at 2.30 at Ramsey High School and then uh, the big finale will be this Friday at noon at Red Mountain Theater. There will be an exhibit showcase in the lobby by Ramsey High School visual arts students and it's free and open to the public. Uh, if you all can make it and stop by, that would be great. I know the kids will love that. Uh, the regularly scheduled PIC meeting will be held next Tuesday, March 1st at 2 p.m. in the council chambers. Submissions are due this Wednesday by noon. Email submissions to laquita.wilson at birminghamal.gov. The next budget and finance meeting will meet Monday, February 28th at 3.30 p.m. here in the council chambers. Submissions are due tomorrow by noon as well. Email submissions to laquia.wilson at birminghamal.gov and kevin.owens at birminghamal.gov. In honor of Bessie Coleman, the first African-American woman to hold a pilot license, the Tittisville Library will make clothes, pens, airplanes on two, well today from 3.30 to 4.30. Also, the income tax preparation will be done every Thursday at the Tisville Library. Uh, they will have, be having bingo this Thursday from 10 to 11 at the Tisville Library as well. Uh, we have a lot going on there. And the Shaolin Memorial Gardens Maintenance and Perpetual Care Associations will, haste, will host a Black History Tribute remembering our ancestors this Saturday from 10 to 1 at the historic Shaolin Cemetery located at 1600 12th Street, Southwest, Birmingham, Alabama, 35211. And then I also look forward to joining my colleagues tomorrow at 11 for the World Games Medal Reveal Ceremony at Sports Hall of Fame. Um, just one last comment, Madam President. I know we all, all nine, 10 of us have been dealing with illegal dumping and littering in our city. I would really love if the council, and I apologize, for how we handle it. We're trying to push forward an initiative before. But I really like the nine of us to come together and have some type of campaign because I feel like unless we show unity amongst each other, it's gonna be hard to convince our residents to have pride in their neighborhoods. So I would just love to see that happen sometime this year. I don't know if that's maybe adopting be litter free in all nine districts or something else, but I really would love to see that. Um, thank you, Madam President. And I do agree with you. I would like to see um, some type of initiative across the city where we could all work together. Um, littering, illegal dumping, this is just poses a problem, I think, in each of our districts. And um, I, I uh, too, apologize for any um, problems that occurred with our desire to have gone ahead and started a program without consent of the entire council. So we would like to revisit that at a next time. I know Council Clark's like, what y'all talking about? But uh, <laughs> this was before you. So we will um, have that opportunity to entertain that. And each of you have your own initiatives in your districts as far as uh, litter and um, cleanups. And what we're proposing is an opportunity for us to work together as an entire council and um, to just try to get our arms around this. So we'll be approaching you again as a, um, through the committee and um, revisit that as an option for us to try to control this. I also want to thank Councilor Tate for her comments as um, part of chair of the Public Safety Committee. We don't have any videos, but for the past two weeks, I have been uh, touring with Donald Shepard and the STRAP initiative conflict resolution initiative, and 
He's got it on the screen now, the game. Uh, but what, do we have that video? Okay, I do know that Councillor Woods and Councillor Pro Tem have also toured the initiatives in their district. So let's just watch this video and we can talk about, I think it's very apropos of what we have going on with the number of teens that we have involved in gun violence and been victim of this. And we're just trying to take this initiative into our middle schools. We know our children in middle school, that they have so many things they have to worry about. And now just by growing up, now you gotta worry about this um, solutions for guns. So go ahead, Kim, thank you. Wardine Alexander. We're here in District 7 at the Jones Valley Middle School. And I'm here today with the STRAP organization. This is Mr. Donald Shepard. He's brought a group of speakers where he's talking to sixth grade students about conflict resolution. <laughs> resolution can really affect our teenagers and our preteens. So what his program is doing is trying to talk to our children and teach them ways to resolve conflict. They're beginning to grow and learn and one of the things they have problems with is how to resolve conflict and we know that can follow us even up to adult age. And so the more our children are able to resolve conflict, they know how to walk away from situations that could otherwise really be harmful to them. Mr. Shepard and our Jefferson County Sheriff Department for bringing this program to D7. And for more from the Birmingham City Council, follow along with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay safe, Birmingham. Thank you all. And during this tour, we've had different opportunities. We've had speakers to come and speak. This last one, we had the reenactment of um, actual conflict. And you would just be surprised what really just affected me our children were desensitized. Some even laughed at what was going on because they see this on TV or they see this places and um, they depict someone being murdered and the mother running and uh, trying to uh, take care of her child. So uh, I think it, begin, it begins in the home and so we are also thankful to the STRAP organization for what they're trying to do in our district. I don't have any announcements for D7. We don't have any neighborhood meetings. I do have to announce and I apologize to the members of the administration committee, but I'm canceling the meeting this afternoon. I do have to um, travel uh, this evening. And also, we know that our speaker, um, Judge Sparks, was going to speak with us, and we know that he's having uh, going in for some surgery, some issues. So we all want to uh, give our thoughts and prayers to Judge Sparks. I think he's okay, just had a fall, but he's having to have some additional um, surgery as a result of that. So we will reschedule that, okay? And uh, I believe that's it. So we'll entertain a motion. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, counselors. We're adjourned. Thank you. Morning, District 1 Councilor Clinton Woods here with a few announcements. Want to make sure that you stay in the loop. We're going to have all the information you need to keep up with what's happening in District 1. On February 28th, that's a Monday, the Huffman neighborhood will be having their neighborhood association uh, meeting, their monthly meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, make sure you tune in. That's a great way to get to know your neighbors and, and really have some input in what's happening in your neighborhood. Also, on February 26th, Leaders of Excellence, they're a nonprofit organization that really focuses on working with young people. 
Uh, they're having a career fair, uh, and so that's going to be February 26th. We're going to invite uh, anyone that wants to participate. Got the information here on the screen. But like I said, if you've got young people uh, that want an opportunity, look for a career, uh, send them out. It's going to be a great opportunity to connect to a job. Also, March is right around the corner. We'll be kicking off our Be Little Free uh, campaign once again for 2022. Had a tremendous showing in 2021. This year, uh, we're going to be back out in the community cleaning up and picking up litter. But we're also going to be in the schools and talking to people about, uh, really speaking with our students about what it means to litter, how that impacts your environment, how it hurts your community, your property values, and the environment. So uh, if you want to help us do that, if you want to help us uh, take maybe 30 minutes to go in and speak to a class about uh, the impact, the negative impact on littering in their community and encouraging them not to do so, uh, get, let us know. Like I said, con contact us here. Uh, we want to hear from you. This is a great opportunity to get involved in the community, work with young people, uh, to continue to make a change in our community. And so uh, that's it for this week. We'll be back next week with more announcements. And as always, if you have issues, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We want to hear from you. Be blessed.